Commando 2. Go. Damn you, Dota 2. Alright, there we go. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the TNP Gaming Arena Playoffs. This is the loser's bracket between UTP and WOF. Both are North American teams, I've, and the main caster is Kingdom, who's playing on WOF, so you can watch his stream at twitch.tv slash kingdomnerdia, and also youtube.com slash kingdomnerdia. So, if you want to catch more of these matches, check out his channel. He's a pretty cool guy. But, yeah, um, I'm asked to help him because he is playing a match at the moment. So I decided, why not? North American mid-level Dota. Hopefully see some uh, interesting picks. I heard Karok from Quantic was playing in this league, so we'll see some interesting picks, I hope. I'm not too sure if he's hearing right now, but eh, what can you do either way? But anyways, uh, <laughs> this is an amateur league. I think the winners of this league get more points in the next season. I'm not too sure what the next season is about, but I'm sure if you're in the North American region and if you want to play some in-house leagues against mid-level teams, then you too can sign up and join TNP Gaming Arena, so yeah. Anyway, I know Jackal for both of these teams. I know his kingdom, the main caster, is playing in this tournament, so yeah. <laughs> but anyway, North American teams, what I've heard from uh, Shred Kid is that they have weird item slots or item styles. They play different heroes, they do like uh, a lot of different things like Midas Invoker, Mantis Style Broodmother, things like that. I think Dignitas was the last unknown sort of mid-level American team to rise up out of nowhere. So maybe we'll see the next great big flash in the pen. And it's really exciting to see this because, you know, MLG is playing on their Game Battles tournament and all that. And there's really been a lot of involvement for Dota 2 coming up. So hopefully you can get this mid-level American scene growing and that way we can get you know mlg to sign up get mlg lands going we can dream can't we so that would just be very very exciting especially to me as a north Americaner. so we'll get into this match right now we're seeing pretty staring bands naga has not been seeing the ban hammer in the first phase these days but we do see her often ban the second phase not too many naga picks these days but maybe the north americans maybe uh utp the untrained professionals an amateur untrained professionals dang but yeah, maybe they just really hate playing against Naga. And who honestly can blame them? Because Naga, even though the 12 base damage nerf is not is pretty annoying. I mean, she's most likely in a trial lane versus a soul lane. So right now, I think they spitefully ban out the barrier just because they know I love that hero. And what are you doing, guys? Come on, Kingdom. You should be saying, pick barrier. So we can entertain B-Ballin and he can just go to town on all the Batrider criticisms so he can stand for us next time and just play Batrider like a boss. But yeah, uh, if you haven't seen my Batrider play, then <laughs> it's probably my only good hero, so try not to feel myself too hard. But Anti-Mage is going to be the first pickup for UTP. Pretty unstandard. Usually Rubik is the first pickup these days. Invoker as well. Even Leshrac could be the first couple pickups. But Anti-Mage looks like UTP just saying, here's our carry. We're going to surround him with four heroes. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to counter to Anti-Mage? And then if you pick a hard, hard counter out early in the game, we'll just pick our supports around it. So, interesting pickup. May they have a really solid Anti-Mage player. Who knows? I mean, honestly, I'm quite... I'm not quite sure myself. But yeah, I'm probably going to upload some of the Staff Cup games with the Skype conversations because I don't have music in those where I just play Bat and I have a lot of fun. But that's another detail for another time. So Rubik is the pickup for WOF, which I'm not too sure what that stands for as UTP has a very professionally drawn logo that indicates that they are probably the best team ever because that logo, it's probably the best logo ever. So process of association right there. Tide Hunter is the pickup as they pick up Rubik and Tide Hunter. Usually, that's not really a combination that you see too much. As uh, hmm. well, and they can't hear me through Dota TV probably because I'm not broadcasting in Dota TV. But yeah. Anyway, uh, Tide Hunter usually when you pick up a Rubik, you don't really pick up a Tide Hunter yourself. So you sort of want the enemy team to pick it up just because that Ravage travels travel speed has been reduced by a lot so it's actually a lot easier for Rubik to come in but of course this is mid-level leagues maybe they want the tie to themselves maybe the reaction rates are not on par of Dendi who has ridiculous reaction rates himself 
So Tyrant are getting the Ravage uh, might not be guaranteed for Rubik these days. But Jakiro is the pickup, probably the strongest support these days in the metagame, in probably all the scenes. I have honestly not watched too much Chinese Dota, so I can't say, or at least in this new patch, so I can't say if uh, Jakiro is a common pickup for Untrained or if Jakiro is a common pickup for that scene, but I know in the North American the European sees Jakiro, he's pretty much a beast. So, yep, Disruptor also pick up Disruptor, pretty powerful support, Static Storm, pretty cool spell, uh, Kinetic Field holding everybody in place just so anti mage can get up close and personal, say, prepare yourselves, and just open everybody and anyone. Once anti mage says, I'm finished farming, he comes out of the jungle, buys everything. Shout out to that one comic. <laughs> that was hilarious, probably the best Dota comic I've read in a long time, with the ridiculous art style, and then it just goes into sort of all serious anti mage training phase. And then anti mage just kills everything. But yeah, that's usually the case with anti mage these days. But he can be played against, and right now, uh, WF, they're not picking hardcore pushers. Usually against an anti mage, you want to have a counter to him, or you want to end the game very early before he can really start to get going. But right now, WF, they don't really have early game powers, but they do pick up a relatively strong counter in the form of Ricky, as he has smokescreen. So, smokescreen for those early engaged. Early game engagements, if they have a solid initiator back out Bricky, then he can really shut down anti mage before he gets his BKB. And usually anti mages these days get BKB like third or fourth item after their Battle Fury and Mantis style. So if they manage to get that Ricky silence off before anti mage can get his BKB, then anti mage will be in for a bit of trouble. But keep in mind, anti mage does have pretty high base moon speed, he can move himself out of the cloud. But that Ricky, he'll always be a threat in terms of ganks. But one thing that they do have to look out for is that Disruptor. But usually most of the time Ricky sort of waits around, just lurking in the shadows, and then he pops up, pops his smoke screen, and he's always in that place for 4 seconds, so Disruptor Glimpse, sending the Ricky back in time, 4 seconds won't really help in that regard, but he can send back the support that Ricky's ganking with, so we'll see if Ricky decides to gank more or to farm more to overcome this animation in the late stages of the game. Meanwhile, both teams deciding to ban off offlane solo, so we'll see if Tanjiro is the offlane solo for WOF. And. Looks like I should probably turn on Dota TV. Hmm. One second. Dire team back. Please excuse me, I am a scrub. Uh, how do I turn on? <laughs> oh man, let's see. Enable open mic. Hopefully that did the trick. I'm not too sure if it did, but we'll see anyway. But there are people in Dota 2 TV who want to watch me, so shouts to those people in Dota TV who do want to watch me. Uh, this is pretty much spur of the moment, but yeah, shouts to Kingdom who has been casting this tournament all this time. And yeah. We can get into this game hopefully very soon. We'll see if Kingdom can keep his team alive in the losers bracket or will they fall out to Anti Mage, Disruptor, and Jakiro in these first pickups. But right now, we do see Gondar off lane solo, Queen of Pain off lane solo, or potential mid solo pickup. Right now, we'll see WF. They have a very versatile map. They could put Tyrant in the off lane solo, they can put him in Trine. Ruby can be a support in the Trine, he can be a mid lane solo. Ricky will most likely be in the safe lane, farming it up as much as possible. So, that's what we're probably going to see in that regard. So right now, their other two picks, they're pretty versatile in how they can lane. Meanwhile, the other, they're not so much. UTP, they pretty much have their Trilon set up. The Kiro, Disruptor, will most likely be supporting anti and Trilon, unless they pick up a jungler for themselves. Where we could see a Disruptor solo mid, but Jakiro will definitely be supporting the anti -mage. But it looks like uh, UTP deciding to ban out, maybe they've been watching WOF matches and deciding to ban out heroes that WF is comfortable with, but they decide to ban out the Invoker, a mid soul hero, and maybe they want to pick up a mid soul hero who does not lane that well against Invoker, so that is always a possibility, maybe they want to, want to run a dual lane mid or something like that, but Leshrac, a very powerful support, only nerf he got was that casting point to Edict. So, not the biggest nerf, but it's a little bit annoying in terms of harassing a bit more with Leshrac, but he still pushes towers as fast as ever, still extremely annoying to play against. Ten Meanwhile, win on our offlane solo, as we see Tinker, the last pickup, they just don't want to face that ancient stacking March of Machines, and that, it's a pretty curious ban, because Rubik most often decides to pick up 4 staff. Ricky, always, when you're a Tinker, you always have to be careful where you teleport into against a Ricky or a Bounty Hunter, just because you never know if they're there and they're going to come up. 
they're gonna pop out and just say surprise. But Clock is gonna be picked up for UTP. Their offlane cell has revealed itself. He might even go mid cell, but Clock is a hero that I personally love playing. But my honestly, my win success ratio with him is quite poor. That's a bit annoying. But Clock, very powerful initiator. The problem is that his late game is absolutely abysmal. As yeah. Yeah, his late game absolutely abysmal as he just drops off the face of the earth once it comes to the late game. He's pretty much useless. He's a very powerful ganker. His short cooldown hook in the early game is quite useful. But his late game is very bad. He has a little armor. He's difficult to lane. His cogs will be very annoying for heroes, melee heroes in particular, to deal with just because Ricky will be trapped in those cogs. And Broombar is a pickup for WF. I'm not too sure about this pickup. Picking up melee heroes against Clock. Not too sure about this choice, they'll all be clumped up and they could be all grouped up in a giant static storm, Jakiro Ice Path, Anti Mage, Ass Whooping. But Broodmother gonna give them some solid offlane presence, get them some solid push. But I do think UTP does have some anti pushes. Jakiro, one of the best anti pushers in the game, just because a macro power every 60 seconds can be used. And of course, Ice Path and Dual Breath, pretty short cooldowns themselves, but UTP just saying, screw it, go on Pudge Mid, clock offlane. Pretty interesting pickups, double hooks, and they're just going to be hooking up with everybody left and right. This is pretty cool to see, not going to lie. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, WF, what are they going to do? <laughs> Quite curious. Will they pick up mid soul? But if they do, then Rubik will be supporting Ricky in the trial lane. They pick up Shao Shaman, so we are going to see a Rubik in the mid soul position. Shao Shaman supporting the Ricky, Tyna just supporting the Ricky as well. Broomer in the off lane. But right now, I'm really looking at the styles of UTP, so I'm a little bit worried about the main caster of this tournament, TNP Gaming Arena, uh, about Kingdom and his squad, because I do just like the look of UTP. They have solid pickups, they have very strong gankers, but still, it might be hard to catch these uh, WF guys as they run away. So I'll introduce the players and teams in just a moment and a half, as I just need to see if Dota TV is working. Battle. You may want to put a delay on the stream. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll put a delay on the stream. As uh, yeah, I'm gonna put a delay on the stream. So I'll be right. Alright, so a two minute delay because I trust these guys intimately, so they are just my best friends going on over here, even though I've never met them in my life, so I really don't know if I can trust these guys. <laughs> but yep. Yeah. As the little Dota TV icon is showing up as well, so that means the Dota TV is being casted as Disruptor resumes the game. And we can get back into this game, but right now we'll introduce the players and the teams on the side of UTP. We have Mizurim playing the Disruptor Zansa, playing the Pudge Parliament, playing the Clockwork. What are you doing? That's not American. Parliament is British. What are you doing, guy? Come on, Clock. What the heck? It should be Congress. Or Senate. Meanwhile, Complex Function is playing the Jakiro. Fudge is playing the Anti Mage, obviously. Uh. Sort of another word for a very naughty word that I will not say just because I'm representing an organization here. But if it was a replay cast, then I'd just go all out crazy with all my profanity. But Light and D is playing the Rubik, looks like Kingdom. The main cast of this term is playing the Tide Hunter. Uh, Andromides is playing the Shadow Shaman. Jameis McGamus, Winky Face, is playing the Broodmother. And Nitro.exe is playing the Ricky. So, yeah, <laughs> know nothing about any of these guys. But hopefully they'll be an interesting game as uh, Kingdom was telling me that these games have interesting picks. We see Clockwork and Pudge. That's pretty cool to see Clock. Very powerful ganker. But like I said, pretty garbage in the early game as looks like Clock is going to get a free room. He's going to be off laning up against Ricky, Shao, Shaman, Tide Hunter. So we'll see if Ricky's good enough to control the creep equilibrium. Otherwise, Clockwork will get some experience. But there's another thing Clockwork can do, sort of like a pseudo Darkseer. Darkseer because he has an AoE nuke that can be spammed 
not with the greatest cooldowns, but a reasonable cooldown, 20 seconds. He can push the wave so hard that it goes to the tower, and then the tower will hit a couple of times, and then it'll slowly make its way back towards here. So it'll be up to Ricky and Shadow Shaman to control the creepy equilibrium. Meanwhile, Tyranter is going to be pulling, so Kingdom. And main caster is going to be stuck as probably the support ward bitch in this game, so that's pretty unfortunate for him. Meanwhile, Broodmother is going to be chilling. Looks like Deceptor already has some sentry ward, so that's going to be unfortunate for this Broodmother very, very soon. As Disruptor is going to chase away this Broodmother, Broodmother will get her farm eventually, but she's really most effective in the early stages of the game. We'll see if Broodmother decides to go for a late game build or if she just decides to chill out, but we see another web being dropped. So Disruptor just going to place another sentry ward, harass that Broodmother out of the way. Usually I'd like to see that sentry ward being safe for a game, but here comes the ice path. Broodmother will be able to escape pretty slow without that web bonus move speed, but actually it's going to get absolute free farm. So right now this is turning out to be a relatively stale early game, which is not something you want to see in any Dota. But hey, it happens all the time. Meanwhile, Clockwork is doing exactly what I said, just rocketing so much that the tower hits the creeps right here, and then the wave just gets pushed back towards him, so even if he doesn't get experience at the early levels, he'll eventually get experience once the wave comes back to him due to that tower. So Clockwork doing an admirable job in terms of controlling the creep equilibrium. He'll probably pick up... Hmm. Usually for this side of spam, if you just want to go for laning Clockwork, you want to pick up a Soul Ring just so you can get as much mana as possible. But keep in mind, Rocket cooldown 20 seconds, Soul Ring cooldown is now 30 seconds due to that nerf, and the Soul Ring doesn't really make it worth it for Clock. Mayo just pick up faster King Boots, pick up Basilius because the mana cost for Rocket Player, obviously pretty low, 50 at level 1. Pretty, pretty ridiculous for Clockwork to spam. But hey, Clockwork is all early game, he is garbage come late game, and he picks up Basilius indeed. So he's going to be spamming those rockets, pushing that wave, and that makes it even more difficult for that Ricky to last it under the tower. Just going to be complete pain in the ass. Poor Ricky. So right now, bottom lane is everything that this anti-age ever wants in life. In top lane, Ricky is just like, what are you doing? Come on, guys. Control the creep equilibrium. As Rubik is, picks up a bottle very, very quickly. Pudge went for bottle and two salves. Uh, very, very pro build as he obviously... Uh, Bought the two cells, made a set of tangos, and then he just went for a fast bow. But I'll bring down the creep stats. As you can see, this is an amateur league, but right now, respectable assets. It looks like Ricky's actually last outlasting the anti mage as Broodmother, lurking in the shadows, as Broodmother found himself just outside the center order range. Mate, Brawl did not want to, our disruptor did not want to initiate on that anti or on that Broodmother whatsoever. But Jakiro's gonna wrap around. He has a haste rune, it's gonna cast Ice Path. It whiffs completely. That's gonna be very unfortunate. Dual Breath gonna scare away the Broodmother, but Broodmother really having a miserable time. Actually, level 3. Pretty respectable. Not too sure what Disruptor and Jakiro are doing. They should really just be focusing and pushing back that Broodmother. Keep in mind, this is a mid level North American amateur league. So. Not anything against them, because hey, we all need to start somewhere. As Jakiro's gonna come in, nice hook by Zansa, cast the Dual Breath. I think the Dual did hit, yes he do, as you see the debuff, Zansa gonna take some significant tower damage, will he die, pops the salve, as well as the healing, as a pop from his bottle, and he lives on 3 HP, very unfortunate for the Rook, but nice gank by the Jakiro, as we can see why Brewmother's getting so much experience. But yeah, creepy equilibrium control, not the best, but still, looks like the point of this turn is to have fun and gain experience, and you two might become the next Dignitas if you're a North American player. So, keep playing, keep practicing. I'm sure these guys probably are better than me, as I am not very good at this game. As Broodmother doing a nice job getting some levels, as is Clock, so off it's rarely that we see offlane souls, but it looks like the top lane. Clock is starting to run out of mana. No, he still has relatively high mana, but Ricky's just doing a better job in terms of controlling the creepy equilibrium. Unfortunately for Clock, even though he has a ward, he's really, really afraid of that incoming gank by the Tidehunter and the Shadow Shaman. Do they have a smoke to see? They do. They are going to use it right now. This could be a very, very bad time very soon for somebody on the mid lane. Namely, this Pudge who's picked up a very fast urn, has a 1000 HP this early in the game. He's going to be pretty difficult to bring down, but Shackle will work wonders as Telkinesis is going to be used. Double damage is popped. As Gush is going to come in, can they get the Shackle going? Zanta, will they even need the Shackle? They will, but they are going to pick up the hit as Rubik finishes it off, getting some sweet, sweet revenge. Just saying, you trying to hook up with me, brah? I'm just going to end that right off the bat. Not going to give you any mixed signals, just going to say, screw it, go away. You are not wanted here. Radiance you know, some under attack. hot ward-on-ward action going on up here. Pretty interesting to see. 
as uh, Broodmother level 4, as we can just check out here, levels really fast. Rubik level 6, Pudge, and Antipage level 5, as well as Ricky. So it's pretty cool. Usually in uh, pro games, one support always finds themselves at like level 2, 6 minutes in, and level 3, like 10 minutes in. It's very unfortunate to see, but since uh, everybody's getting a lot of experience, that, we're gonna see, that means we're probably going to see more early aggression and more early game team fights, which is what we're coming to watch. So, anyway. As Antimate is going to last hit some creeps, 35 and 7, so he's picked up his farm ridiculously hard. So that might be something for the Dire to be concerned about, as there might be a push going. One thing that is going for them, like I said, this is really getting a lot of experience, and that's pretty good for him. Meanwhile, Clock not having the same success, so it looks like the creep equilibrium has been pushed back to this tower at the very least. So that is something for the Clock. But Clock, if he doesn't get going pretty soon, he's just going to have a miserable time in the late stages of the game. Clock does need some items, just needs his tank up, mostly. But they have very solid ganking heroes in the form of Pudge. And this is really just to protect the Sanchez. If they gank everybody across the map, anti will just have so much room to free farm. And if they gank the Ricky, then pretty much Anti-Mage can go unchecked. We'll see if Murray decides to pick up a fast Orchid to deal with that Anti-Mage. That increased soul burn damage. Pretty significant. 5% can mean all the difference in the world. So often you see that Orchid ticking and everybody is left with like 10 HP and that 5% soul burn damage. Hey, it helps a lot. Meanwhile, Rubik picks up a Mantle of Intelligence, Magic Wand, all standard items as nothing is happening at this stage in the game. Looks like everybody's firing up to Kiro, level 5. Picks up two points in Ice Path, one point in Liquid Fire, one point in Dual Breath, and setting his next skill point, just trying to see what he needs. Might put it back into Ice Path. It is such a ridiculous spell. Very low mana cost, as you can see, 75 is so good. As Disruptor managed to get a kill on Rubik, as I obviously was not paying attention, as looks like Pudge had a say in that as well. So nicely done by the mid guys. Rubik gonna press down a decent amount, but. Meanwhile, Pudge, he's probably going to pick up his boots relatively soon, and we'll see if this Pudge decides to start ganking hardcore across the map. Really wants to help out the top lane, so Clock can get good levels and experience as well, but this Clock completely out of mana as well. He's going to go for fast drums, makes a lot of sense. Drums are very, very good on Clock, or give, them, give him that bonus move speed, and just give him some nice stats to work with. Meanwhile, Disruptor... Journeying on his raptor to trek forth, place wards, and bring peace to the land. But looks like there might be a gang. Smoke is up, and Disruptor might just be caught for a rude awakening. Smoke immediately dispels, Gush being casted. Disruptor, he's gonna cast the kinetic field, holding Rubik in place. Fable coming in, but there was there a teleport? I thought I saw one, but Disruptor is gonna take the fall. I I'm sure I saw a teleport, but it looks like Pudge is gonna escape just fine for now. But that smoke, very unfortunate for Disruptor, because they just pranced on by this Observer Ward and just said. Disruptor just said, hey, I'm safe, as Hook gonna come in with on the Rubik. Very, very unfortunate for him. But now they see the ward movement, and Clock is gonna have to stay the heck away. No boots, deciding to go for that fast bracer into the Robe and the Magi. Robe and the Magi just give him that extra intelligence, but unfortunately, his mana regen is really, really bad, so he's gonna go back to base, refuel his mana. And one thing that Robe and the Magi will do is just give him base intelligence, give him larger mana pool, and slowly but surely get more mana regen. But Ring of Basil is gonna help him out a little bit in that regard. Boom! There it goes! But one thing that is a little bit worrisome is that anti age 55 and 7. Meanwhile, Ricky, what is he going for? Picks up a Blade of Alacrity as well as Tranquil Boots. Usually you want to get Treads on Ricky. Just because he has so much agility to work with, and that agility will be useful in terms of uh, helping out his backstab ganks. But Tranquil Boots, cheap boots, faster move speed. I'd rather see Treads on Ricky just because he attacks Daya's quite a bit. But it looks like Jakiro doing a nice job in terms of cleaning out the spiderlings while well, trying to. But level 1 dual breath can only do so much. You know, looks so like he's going to be a top gank. I think the wards did spot him. The wards did spot them indeed. Clockwork Rocket trying to spot out the position. Clock now has no mana to work with, so that's going to be very, very useless in these incoming engagements. Clock just has so many problems with him as Hook whiffs for the Pudge, pops a haste drink, gonna bottle up, and will he go back to the mid lane? Well, Rubik has Observer Wards probably given to him by a support, gonna place those Observer Wards to spot the Pudge, just to see him whenever he tries to go in for the Hook. But yeah, Brown comes in with the smoke screen, trying to go onto the clock, where Clockwork is very tanked, even though he doesn't have too much items, as Ricky is able to blink on out of there. You know, Rocket's just giving him a nice parting shot, just saying, what are you doing, man? Get over there. 
Meanwhile, Auntie Ange is gonna harass his broodmother. What else can you say? But broodmother is doing a nice job getting as much experience and as much levels as she can with a decent amount of farm. 30. Considering the trial and she's up against 30 at this stage in the game is quite respectable. Looks like there might be engagement on the top lane as there are three heroes there. Cockrook receives a clarity as well, so he might be useful. He is level 5, so he does not have that hook shot to hook in from a long way away, but they, they have that pudge hook as well. So they have a lot of long range initiation going for them. Do they have a detection for the Ricky as he's going for fast defusal? No detection for the Ricky, so this Ricky can pretty much go unchecked in this engagement. Uh, can they get a blind hook? No, just gonna harass that Rubik a bit, or that Ricky a bit. Meanwhile, Rubik has just been having this mid lane all to himself, probably increasing his last hits at a relatively fast rate. As looks like this top, they can't really push the tower. I'm not really too sure what they're doing. They're trying to shut down Ricky's farm as much as possible, which I suppose is a respectable decision. Thrall is gonna teleport back. Looks like the Thunderstrike was stolen. Kinetic Field gonna be used as he just glimpses the Thrall right back. Here comes Pud as the hook comes in. Telekinesis is gonna be used as well. Can the Rubik escape? Pudge just too slow as the hook and Rubik was able to get away. Pudge with that below average base move speed really helped out Rubik even though he got a 5 move speed decrease in the last patch. Oh so significant. Yo, all time to Looks like uh, Shadow Shaman not yet level 6, so I'm not too sure what they're doing on the bottom lane. Trying to gank out the Anti-Mage and trying to pressure him. But this Anti-Mage is going to get a very fast Battle Fairy. He has the Coiling Blade as well to amplify his farm. So he's on his way to his Battle Fairy, and once he gets that, man, his farm will just be completely unchecked. It'll be up to a Diffusal Blade Ricky to get him because Anti-Mage, when he goes for this Battle Fairy Rush, usually only has about 800 HP, but looks like this Anti-Mage getting a lot of points in the stats. Very smart build. Burning trademark this in the International too. Just get Anti-Mage as tank as possible because, hey, you're not going to do too much harassment when you're farming, so that mana break not too important. You're not going to be blinking away as much because, hey, you're going to be farming a lot, so your other teammates will just be protecting you as much as possible. And it's not like you need too much spell shield because guess what? You're farming. Who would have guessed as Ice Path going to come in? They're just trying to clear out these spires, but these spires are very, very tank at this stage in the game. You know, Ricky, after that pressure on the top lane, has his farm decreased by a decent amount, but that defusal will be finished in about 700 gold. And anti -Mage will have to watch out for that, but Sentry Ward is placed. Looks like anti is going to approach very aggressively. They do not... Oh, they do know Ricky is there because that was the Sentry Ward. Looks like Disruptor might go down, but he is going to leave Stag Storm. And Ricky will be able to escape at that Sentry Ward. Going to get sight of that Ricky once again, but the Ricky is going to take... Uh, the escape as Disruptor did take the fall to the Broodmother. Very unfortunate for that Disruptor. Here comes Tyrantor, level 5, but looks like they just need mana to try to clean up. Jakiro, low base move speed, is going to get decreased, but here comes Hook onto the Rubik. Nicely done as Zansa is caught in a lag spike, as that was very unfortunate. But looks like anti picks up a kill on the Shadow Shum. Broodmother going to go in for the punch. Can they get Zansa hooks in Parliament as the Hook came in by Clockwork? Hit nothing, but anti picks up a double kill as Ruin picks up a triple kill. Not too sure who favored that fight overall, because Broodmother got three kills, but Broodmother is not the primary carry, but it's very significant that Pudge died, and Ricky and Broodmother both survived, so overall the Dire did come in advantage, especially since Broodmother got the triple kill. So nicely done by the Dire, but one thing they do have to worry about is that Anti-Mage. He picked up a double kill, and he's getting a lot of farm. Meanwhile, a teleport in. Ricky is going to be spied out by the Sentry Ward as Sentry Ward's all across the map. That's one of the problems with the playing against invisibility heroes in these types of games as Anti-Mage gets hexed for a brief second. Will they turn around for the Shadow Shaman? Not yet level 6, so very, very squishy. Broodmother picks up the quarter staff, so might go for Orchid. Probably is going to go for Orchid, unless he goes for Battle Fire Rush. And hey, anything's possible. But looks like they want to get a tower push going, as they have all five people down here. They do have the Ravage, that is clearly what they're going to go for. They're saying, hey, we have Ravage, let's take this team fight. Let's go kill some faces. Do it with flair. Meanwhile, Ricky healing up with those Tranquil Boots, just negating that tower damage meal. Disruptor trying to pick up as many levels. Not too sure I Disruptor teleport to farm here. He already was level 6 in that previous engagement. But I guess he wants to get that max level glimpse. Here comes the Telekinesis as Clockwork. Hookshot 
is on cooldown for a bit. Not enough mana to use that, so he cannot initiate from a far away range. As there's gonna be hex on the anti mage. Anti mage getting burned a lot of mana, but here comes the ice path. This clock gets a nice cog onto the Ricky. Ricky is gonna be the first one to take the fall. Tired to try to go in, but Stag Storm disrupting so much his damage. He's gonna try to get out of there as soon as possible. Zedza is gonna be the next one to take the fall. As Shadow Shaman escapes on barely an HP, they're not focusing wants back up. Two kills for the rain, as looks like they're duking out mono y mono versus Takiro, and Shadow Shaman wins as Takiro very naturally tanked. Conquer picks up the kill, Rubik comes in, picks off the anti age very significant, four heroes died for the raid, nicely done by WOF, did not think they had it, but once Tyranty just walked past the static storm, Ravage won them that team fight. but they do have to be careful, because they can't rely on that, meanwhile the ultimates on the rain side, pretty spam, well Tyranty ultimate cooldown, 150 seconds, that's not going to be very good, and this tower. Not yet below half HP. We'll see if they can get the push going. As uh, Spire is going to go for works. Rain going to fortify it. Will they get the defense going in time? Punch is approaching. Has Smoker Z as well as Face Boots. But this tower might take the fall in the meantime. Is there a Ring of Basilis giving them some armor? Looks like it's not even needed. As here comes Hook onto the Brute Mother. Nice hook by the Pudge. Nicely done. Is there detection to reveal? Is That is the key question. Brumon is going to escape in the nick of time. Meanwhile, Rubik is going to be chased down to the ends of the earth. Rubik is most definitely going to take the fall unless this clutch TP. Rocket's going to come in. Clock picks up another kill. Shackle goes down. Immediately cancelled because of that threat of the Pudge. But nice chase by the anti -mage. Clock picks up another kill. As we can just see, the early kill scores. Clock 2 0 and 5 as the ice path completely wists. Looks like they want to get a push going on the bottom lane as well. But I like what Ricky's doing, just saying. I'm going to try to farm up as much as possible, pick up my Diffusal Blade, and once I get that, I can get Soul Ganks pretty much across the map. Especially this early in the game when everybody has low HP pool, it's going to be such an annoying presence to deal with. As was there engaged on the top lane? Man, my eyes are mistaking me, but there's going to be an engagement onto the Disruptor. I'm trying to come some back. No, just going to be Stag Storm, but Ricky just kills him without Diffusal. That's very, very unfortunate for the Disruptor. Probably should have glimpsed, even though I wouldn't have sent him back too far. That was probably the thought in Disruptor's mind. But hey, Glimpse will stall the rookie a bit longer. May get away from that blink strike. Oh wait, never mind. Disruptor didn't even have boots. Well yeah, probably has boots now. No, doesn't even have boots. This disruptor really, really hurting. So that's gonna be very unfortunate for the disruptor player as WOF. Looks like uh Kingdom might be going on for the next stage of this tournament. As uh, Centroids starting to be popped by the side of the dire trying to devour the Centroids give Ricky and Broomvar a lot of map control, but nice pushing as they picked up two towers. Ricky has a Diffusal Blade, Broodmother is getting relatively good experience. Meanwhile, the only thing going on the side of rating is that Broodmother. As looks like Pudge decided to eat the Rubik, here comes the Ice Path holding Rubik in place. Nicely done by Pudge and Jakiro, picking up a kill on Rubik as Rubik has unfortunately died a decent number of times, but 100 last hits. Amateur League anti mage is not the worst, as he's going to have his battle very soon, and that farm is going to skyrocket very, very soon. And considering he has no towers, that's pretty impressive nonetheless, but there's going to be a giant engagement for this top tower. Looks like Hook missed again. That Hook probably used and it hooked onto the ally. Or maybe it's just out of range. Keep in mind, Clockwork Hook at 01, 1000 range. So it's not quite as long as a max out Pudge Hook. So Clock just uh, getting some kills, but not really having too significant of an impact in this stage of the game. And that's unfortunate, because Clock, he's a pretty cool hero. He charges in and doesn't afraid. Of much Regeneration. as Rubik gonna teleport in has the drums himself. Will they defend this top tower? They do have Ravage, and that could be a bad sign for the rain. They might be taking this fight without Ravage. Usually in these games, you rush down the you write down the Ravage timer, but I don't know if these guys wrote it down themselves. Meanwhile, looks like uh, Ricky just chilling, has a Diffusal Blade, only 850 HP, any detection on the side of rain, they have dust, so once Ricky reveals himself, he will just get manhandled by all these guys, double dust picked up, triple dust, it's starting to look like a triple dust gank, but Tyrant is approaching, moving his fat ass into the middle of everybody, just saying, come at me bros. You know, anti -Mage just farming the mid lane, has his Battle Fury, he's gonna start getting his farm going very, very soon. And Broodmother can't freely push with those spiralings, but she will have the Orchid right about now, as she's going to have it delivered to her right now. Meanwhile, Ricky is just lurking all the while, making sure to see if that's Centaur, so he has to be very careful. But looks at these supports staying very far back. Overall, uh, considering Pink is, wasn't doing anything, trying to get some solo push going, I was saying... The Dire was favorite because they're getting more experience in these stages, but now Pink is going to the top lane, so I think Anti-Mage is 
favored slightly now, considering nothing's going, just because he can out farm the brood mother, kill those fires, really prevent the push. But there's gonna be a hook onto the Rubik, nicely done by his punch, getting some clutch hooks as Kinetic Field gonna trap in the Rubik. You know, Ricky is held in place by Kinetic Field, Tyler trying to walk in, pop the rabbit, gets two heroes at the very least, but Clock still healthy HP, Jakiro naturally takes support as Clock escapes barely. Meanwhile, the hook goes down, the Ricky, beautiful play by his punch as he managed to get another hook. Clock trying to escape in the nick of time, can he get the escape? Gonna try to teleport out, Kinetic Field gonna hold this Tide Hunter in place. Parliament is going to live to fight another day, as democracy is going to be thwarted for now. Meanwhile, Rain took that team fight overwhelmingly, all the while HMH is farming up. We'll see who he decides to go for, usually the standard build is going to be that Mantis style. So even though they had Ravage, Ravage caught two heroes and two high L high HP heroes, and considering Rubik is a bolt of damage, Considering Rubik or Ricky is not tank at all, could not survive another hook by that Pudge. They really could not get too much done with that Ravage, and that Ravage is going to be on cooldown for another 150 seconds. So that's very unfortunate for the Dire. And keep in mind, all the while, Ricky was in that fight, and he did die. Antimage was just farming his heart's content on that bottom lane. Once he picks up Manstyle and picks up BKB, Smokescreen will not be enough in terms of holding that Antimage in place. So it might be time for Ricky just to. Spy out that Antimage and try to go for some solo ganks. That might be what Ricky's going for right now. But we'll see if the Raiden let him do that. As will there be a Pudge hook onto the. Oh, nice blink as he stole the blink from the Anti Age. As he's just going to do a bit of harass and Anti Age will be able to escape. Very, very tank. But here comes Rurik. Is he revealed? I think he did reveal himself accidentally. As Anti Age is going to escape right now. Staying a bit longer. Trying to scout the position of everybody else. Clockwork going to handle the Mother. Clockwork would not die to a Brew Mother. Uh, actually his TP is on cooldown, so if he's not careful, he will die, but Ricky, gonna try to run after the Pudge, uh, Ricky, a little bit of bug, as I do not know if he's invisible or not. He's not appearing invisible on my screen, but looks like they're gonna try to set up a gang on the Brew Mother. Ricky's gonna reveal himself, Defuse Blade, Pudge gonna take a bunch of damage, but focusing on the most tankier on the map might be a huge mistake for the Dire. Ice Path gonna come in, looks like Brew Mother picked up a kill on the Pudge at the very least, but they're gonna sacrifice way too much. Disruptor did take the fall, Pudge by his back. Completely unnecessary. Looks like they want to try to take this team fight for two for two, but they lost their two semi carries in the farm. Ricky and Broomer, and all they got was a Pudge and a Disruptor. I guess they got a little bit more considering Dyer's Pudge wasted a buyback for pretty much no reason. But I guess they want to keep up their pressure. And meanwhile, Anti Mage farming to his heart's content. And soon he's going to say, I'm done farming and just kill everything. Meanwhile, in the bottom land, as Time to has Ravage, looks like they will not respawn soon enough. The price of having high level heroes at this stage in the game is that they're going to take a long time to respawn. As Hook comes in from a mile away, picks off Kingdom as he has unfortunately found himself out of position. A blind hook at that. Nicely done this Fudge. Might have just been testing out the water, but that Clockwork Rocket and Pudge Hook does synergize quite well. Keep in mind, at max level, Clockwork Rocket reveals the area that is cast for 20 seconds, I do think. No, 10 seconds at all levels. I guess they changed that. As anti age blinks in, trying to go on the Shadow Shaman. Brew Mother is going to escape for now, but this is looking very, very grim. At least they do have an Orchid up on the Brew Mother, as Dust is going to be used on the Ricky. Brew Mother somehow managed to disable that, but Ricky is going to have to stay very far back. Looks like the Dire want to get this fight, but considering Brew Mother's so low HP, they might not want to do this. Mio Antifa is just going to continue his farm. We can check out the gold graph at this stage. Radiant starting to pull ahead, 4k gold, but experience graph is really going to tell the different tale in this story, as they have almost a 6k gold or experience advantage for the Radiant. And they might be able to pick up this middle tower. Kingdom going to position himself, try to get off the perfect Ravage. We'll see if he can do that, as Zansa going to provide some pressure on this top tower. Looks like they want to get this Ravage going, but... They ain't gonna do a nice job in terms of spreading out and keeping everybody away. And even in mid-level games, everybody knows to spread out once that Ravage decides to come in. But we'll see. Unfortunately, Rubik has been dying a decent number of times. Has not had the impact he was hoping for. Three and six. That's gonna be very unfortunate. Meanwhile, Clockwork, as much as I was ragging on him, he's 2-0 and 10 by far having the most assists on the game. But this MVP is gotta be the Pudge laying some nice hooks. In conjunction with those Clockwork Rockets, just spotting out everything, just being a complete voyeur. Very, very unsettling for the Dire, as does... No, stole the Stag Storm, so cannot blink away instantly from that Pudge Hook. That might be a bit of a mistake, but Anti is going to farm all the while. Here comes the Ricky, can he cut smoke screen? He does, and the Fuse Blade, but Ricky with that high base, we pops a man stop, 
and it's saying you can't kill me anymore I put a bunch of point stats I'm level 16 you can't soul kill me anymore and Ricky's just like oh crap now I have to farm but right now he's just gonna be way way behind the farm of anti-mage so unless you get a gank going on the anti mage with somebody else considering they don't have too many mobile heroes they have Rubik without a four staff or a blink dagger Broodmother pretty much stays in one lane as Dust is going to reveal the Broodmother. Can she escape? Will they get a hook? Zed's trying to maneuver himself, but looks like double teleport's going to spell another story. But keep in mind, WF is clearly on the defensive in this game. He already is in many teleports. Rika going to try to get his farm going to keep up with the anti mage anti is just too far ahead at this stage in the game. Pause coming in from UTP. So, this is the TNP gaming arena as keys are bugged. So, that's a bit, bit unfortunate uh, for the UTP squad. As I can just use this time to check out my messages and see if there's any more updates. But yeah, I should be joined by Kingdom, the Tide Hunter player. He's the main caster of the TNP Gaming Arena. Twitch.tv slash Kingdom Nerdia. YouTube.com slash Kingdom Nerdia. Check him out. Give him some love. But he's the main caster for the TNP Gaming Arena, and he asked me to stand in, and here I am. So, shouts to me. Anyway, looks like uh, the Go is called by the side of the Radiant, and Go is called by the side of the Dire. One thing that Dire do have going for them is that pretty solid team fight in the form of Ravage in the form of the Shackles by the Shadow Shaman. 900 HP, not the best. Looks like they want to get engaged with they're going to initiate on this Pudge as Silence is going to come in from the Brute Mother. They're going to kill this Pudge at the very least, but what price will they pay? Clock trying to run in and get the Cogs going. Cast the Ravage, at least it's two, it hits the Thrall as well, and looks like Clock took the fall and Raiding on full retreat. This is the team fight that Dire need to get themselves back in the game, but Jakiro did manage to pick off Kingdom, the Titan in the midst of that, but Jakiro is going to pay the price with his life. Another buyback as the anti is going to come in, and now the fun has ended. No fun zone, says the anti mage. As how much mana does anti mage have to complete his pursuit? Oh, nice mana split as they lock the Rubik in place. I think the clock bought back. He did buy back. They're going to go on the anti mage. I don't know if they have enough damage. Silence going on for so long. Did they chain silence this properly? They did. Can they pick up the kill on the anti mage? That would have been huge. Looks like Bruno going to try to chase as far much as possible. Only one point to spell shield. If he managed to get the spawn spiraling, this will be the death of anti mage. Anti mage blink cooldown is up. Looks like he's trying to wand up, and anti mage will escape just in the nick of time. No, here comes the snipe. Mantis splits it. What a play by Fudge. As only one point to spell shield, that would have definitely meant the death of him. And now the Dire have to retreat. Here comes the detection. Ricky gonna get hooked. Will he get dismembered? As there was a dust use, but he's just gonna blindly follow Ricky around. Looks like Clock might take the fall. As here comes the dismember onto the Brood Mother. Ricky cannot reveal himself, or otherwise he will die. At least Brood Mother does pick off the Clockwork. Any more dusts? No more detection. Oh, <laughs> goes on the disruptor. Oh no, very unfortunate for the Radiant. As looks like no more detection. It might be time to consider picking up a gem. But overall, that did favor the Dire by a decent amount. They bought back in the clockwork, picked up four kills. Antimage picked up one or two. But a nice fight by the Dire, keeping themselves back in the game. And keep in mind, neither Brood nor Ricky died. Ricky gonna go for the BKB smart choice. Brood should probably do the same. 2300 gold in the bank, but meanwhile, the last hits. 212 for the Ricky. Nobody else over 100. Still, that did help the Dire get themselves back in terms of the experience graph a little bit, but the goal graph might just keep going back up and up, and now Shaoshan's going to take the fall on the top lane. And Mage just saying, I can kill you in a couple swipes of my glaives, and I'll provide a bit of pressure on that top lane, uh, taking some unnecessary tower damage, as he should probably redirect it, and he does. But here comes Ricky. Does he have enough mana? He does not have enough mana, as looks like he's going to get purged. Trying to do as much damage, not too sure what Fudge is doing, trying to do as much damage as possible. Fudge is going to escape. Teleport scroll is still on cooldown, but looks like the Dire do not know and she's just going to escape in the nick of time. Meanwhile, can Rubik escape? Rubik has just been dying an unfortunate number of times. He is going to escape for now. Meanwhile, Broodmother going to get trapped in the cogs. Centroid being used and Broodmother is going to take the fall. Cannot run, cannot hide from all of these disables, but he gets killed by a neutral. Oh no! Those mud golems. They're scary. Meanwhile, Rubik steals the spell. So what did he steal? He stole dual breath. 
And that's going to be in the life of him, because I do not think Ray knew he was there until that spell shield animation, spell steal animation ticked in. So I think Rurik might have made a big misplay right there. Sacrificed his life needlessly. As I'm not too sure why he went drums, usually four staff dagger is the standard build on Rurik. Maybe they just wanted the drums for that moose speed art. Um, you know, time to try to go for a hood, check out the items. As looks like Thrall Arcane Boots, bunch of Arcane Boots on the side Dyer's of the Radiant. As Force Staff is going to be tried to picked up by the Pudge. Looks like Clock Dyer's with that buyback is not five. having the best of times. But he's not having the worst of times. Has the drums and phase boots at the very least. As allows Dyer's move Middle speed and can chase to the ends of time. Jakiro has a mechanism and Arcane Boots. Jakiro is quite far and Meal and anti going to go for straight heart. Just saying, don't need BKB. Can just kill Amazing. everything, tank everything. We all the Dyer do not have many items to speak of. They really try to get themselves back in the game, but it looks like it's going to be very, very, very difficult at this stage in the game. Broodmother, can she get a soul kill? Has the Yasha. Will she go for the Curse? She does. Picks up a free 175 gold. Will that mean her life? As here comes the Sentry Ward. Going to trap Broodmother in place. Here comes the Ice Path as well. Broodmother just might pay for that Curse kill with her life. Not worth it. And if it was a support kill yet, as Ravish gonna come and do they have enough follow-up damage? Here comes Rubik. Looks like Zansa might take the fall. Shackle gonna hold the Disruptor in place. It looks like Rubik does pick off the putt. And Disruptor takes the fall as well. Clockwork on their cheek, but here comes Ricky. Ricky's gonna probably pick up this Clockwork as well as Clockwork manages to escape. Three for one in that gauge, and, and they got a courier. Nice job by the Dyer, but look at Anti-Mage. You are not allowed to have kills. You're not allowed to have fun. Just gonna kill your towers and push your base. And what are you gonna do about it? Oh, guess what? I can just blink the heck out. Meanwhile, in Finland, or North America, this is, uh, we'll just look at the net worth. Antimage doubling up the next highest hero is not what you want to see in this stage of the game. And once Antimage decides to play, these fights might spell a different story, but kudos to the Dyer. Not bowing out of it, taking some nice team fights, and overall trying to get themselves back in the game, getting themselves back in the game in terms of experience at the very least. So that does mean something. But meanwhile, the gold per minute for anti age approaching 600 gold per minute, and it might just go up very, very soon. Very close to that heart. Actually, already has the heart. We'll see what he decides to go for then. Will he continue to farm? Might just go for buyback and try to get Roshan and end the game, as he has three tier 4 items, and can only. Eventually, he will get capped out. Meanwhile, Centaur is going to be placed. It might have spotted out the Ricky in that. I would rather the Di or the Rain pick up a gem. But considering they have been losing the Siege Agents without the Anti Mage, I guess that might not have been the best choice. But Ricky is going to escape for now. The Centaur, unfortunately, does not give vision of the area. It looks like there's going to be teleport out by the Ricky. Escapes in the nick of time. And that's very good. But the Ricky, does he have BKB just yet? 200 gold away. So, this might be a very close team fight, but the key factor is Anti Mage. He's going to start playing very soon. Has the heart, has 1400 gold in the bank. And there's going to be another pause. So, uh, yeah. We will just bring down some more kills and assists. Rubik 8 and 8, after going 3 and 6, has picked up the kills at the very least. Does he have 4 staff? He does have 4 staff. So, that's going to be pretty useful in terms of, uh,. Forcing everybody out of the cogs, even though the mana will get burned, forcing people... Wait, you can't do that in a kinetic field. So actually, this is a pretty anti uh, four staff lineup. Cogs will burn the mana. New patch change. Won't be able to force out of the kinetic field. New patch change. I mean, if Pudge is biting you, he'll just keep biting you. That was good but still, you. overall, pretty useful in terms of uh, getting the anti off your back. Make him use a blink at the very least. Unfortunately for Shao, Shaman not yet level 11, very low HP. They're grouping up. Will they go for a mid push? Trying to clear this creep wave and then probably gonna smoke, but they're making it pretty obvious that they're gonna do so since they are all grouped up. Do they have the smoke to see up? Kingdom, the Tyler 2 does not have one, but Rocket's gonna spot it out. No smoke being pucked up. Looks like the Courier is gonna give one to the Shadow Shaman, but the Rain do clearly know as they are all grouped up and Clockwork Rocket did spot him out. So, Double most down, obvious smoke ache in the world. Looks like they're just gonna wait a bit before using that smoke, but keep in mind, Ricky is gonna have that BKB in this next team fight. Anti Mage gonna go to town on this Roshan as Rancor does respawn. Heart is up on the Anti Mage, 2.4k HP in the bank as Ricky is gonna teleport to the top tier 2 tower. Not even gonna use the smoke, just gonna try to charge in. 
They do have a Hood Defiance Tower destroyed by a Dire. Meanwhile, Antage is going to pick up the Aegis. Unfortunate time for the rain as Hex is going to go on Parliament. Stack Storm stunning everybody. Huge Stack Storm. As looks like Kingdom trying to maneuver himself. He dies before he gets the Ravage. This is going to be a huge problem for the Dire. I.e. this might be the game. But Bruma was able to kill the Clockwork and still half HP. Can they escape? Ricky pops a BKB. Could not do too much. One for one. As Rain gets a courier killed once again. Nicely done by the Shao Shaman. One for one without Ravage. That was a good fight by the Dire. Not too sure what Radiant was doing. As that stack storm was huge by the Disruptor. Caught three heroes. Tired was caught in the kinetic field as well for a long amount of duration. So, yeah. Not too sure how Radiant did not get an overwhelming victory in that team fight. But it looks like they have the Aegis they want to push in. They have Pudge to get a hook going to try to initiate the team fight. But Time Hunter is responding with that Ravage. He did not use it in that last engagement. Can they defend against this relentless anti mage pressure? Glimpse is going to be used 30 second cooldown, so that might not have been the best use of Glimpse, but hopefully it's going to cool down soon enough. Telekinesis is just going to be used to stun the anti mage for a bit. Hook is going to whiff as anti mage is going to blink in. Might just to lose his Aegis as here comes the Macrophia Shackle gonna hold people in place. Smoke screen as well. Ravage gonna catch a bunch of heroes. Antage at the very least is gonna lose his Aegis. But he's gonna respawn with full HP. Can they kill Pudge? Antage is gonna respawn. They do kill the Pudge. Antage is gonna say surprise. I'm gonna try to kill everything. Looks like Disruptor might take the fall. Antage is gonna go back in for the Brew Mother. Looks like Dyer gonna be held in place as Gush gonna come in. Will Dyer actually win this team fight? That would be a huge misplay by the rain if they do. Looks like Antage. It's just getting permanently silenced. It's dire. Got a one for nothing and kill the Aegis in the midst of that. Do they have a gem? They don't have a gem. They don't have a sentry ward either. As Broodmother is going to go back to town on the Clockwork with that insatiable hunger. Going to try to get himself back to full HP. But gets bursted down. Clockwork does take the fall. But now Rubik is going to take the fall as well. One more hit by the Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage just too strong. Will they hold in place? Here comes the Hex. Do they have enough damage? Looks like the Smoke Screen whiffs. Shackle going to hold in place. As Disruptor is going to try to get the fight. Multiple buybacks on the side. Dire Ricky respawn. And anti age might just have to get out of there. Gonna try to get this tower at the very least. Moraine overall. It's hard to say who won that fight, but Rubik just gonna force stab himself out. At least they got the tower, but it's really difficult to say who won that fight. I think in overall terms of team fight, Dire have more coordination, but Rain just might have outfarmed them way or outfarmed the Dire and outleveled the Dire. And that might be the Dire's undoing, so that would be very unfortunate considering the Dire do have better team fight coordination as they were able to isolate the targets and kill their targets much more quickly, but this Antimage is just too far. But Antimage might just have to go for the BKB. No, just gonna go for the Butterfly. Gonna give him some invasion, but still, uh, if he gets silenced, if he gets, I mean, defusaled and purged, then he will be held in place and won't be able to right-click. You know, BKB would just allow him to right-click even more. We'll see if a gem is picked up, as they really desperately need the gem, but who would carry it before they die? Disruptor gonna go for the Ghost Scepter. Disruptor having a pretty big impact in these team fights. These connect fields, considering everybody is decently grouped up, considering they've been fighting in choke points, connect field is able to trap a decent number of people, and with the four staff nerf to connect field, they're gonna be stuck in there unless they have BKB. You know, Broodmother trying to go for the BKB, not even close just yet, as we can pull down the gold graph, still in favor of the Radiant, experience starting to jump back in favor of the Radiant as well, but I'm not too sure who won that last fight. Probably Radiant, even though they lost the Aegis on the Antimage and lost a lot of heroes, because they did force multiple buybacks from the Dire, so Radiant did take that game. As Jakiro once again disconnects, and we will just wait a bit, but right now this is a very interesting game. Dire have better coordination. And if Broodmother and Ricky do get unchecked, they do have overall more physical DPS. Two versus one on the Antimage. Might be a problem. So we'll see if Raiden can end the game, but Tyrant Ravage is up, as is all the ultimates on side of the Dire. And that Ravage is really being a thorn in the side, considering no BKBs, no magical immunity. So that Ravage, when it is casted, will stun for at least 2.5 seconds on everybody, if it does manage to hit everybody. Meanwhile, Stealth. Uh, pretty anti Rubik lineup, unfortunately not able to steal the best of spells. Stealing Static Storm is very nice, so that's one thing going for them. Meanwhile, Shadow Shaman trying to pick up as many levels as possible. Still not over 1k HP, probably gonna go for a Ghost Scepter when it is possible. They just need to mass up Ghost Scepters. Not even worried about anybody else besides the Antimage. Looks like this Dire Ward gonna spot the movement of the rain as they did not even bother to smoke up. Looks like they just want to go for this tower. But still, Bottom Rocks is completely exposed. I do not know why they're going for the top tower. 
Looks like they just want to play sideward. Will they rotate back to bottom? Nope. Ricky doing a nice job pushing the wave. They do not want to waste any more time. I think it would behoove them to waste a bit more time and try to get that bomb push just so they wouldn't have to go for that tower. And now, looks like they're going to go on this creep wave, but Dire do have the glyph. They're going to go against another tier 3 tower. Will they activate the glyph? Looks like, uh, would they steal? They stole Rot. Pretty much the worst ability they can steal. Dust going to be used right off the bat. Who'd they get a hook on? They got a hook on the Clockwork. Disruptor going to be held in place. Is Brewmother going to charge in? No. Brewmother going to get glimpsed right back. Dust was used on that Brewmother. Looks like Brewmother is going to be caught in the middle of so much dead. Brewmother is going to take the fall. I don't think she has buyback. She did buy back in that last engagement, and that just might mean the end of this game. Brewmother going to be dead for another 60 seconds. This is all up to the Ricky and the Tide. If they can get their engagement, Ice Path does whiff. As looks like Antage is going to get hexed as well as smoke screened. Here comes a BKB by the uh, Ricky. Can they get the rash? They do get the rash right before Kingdom dies, but it looks like Antage is just too tank. Gonna kill the Ricky, gonna kill everybody. And that's gonna be the end of this game. So, very, very intense game. Only 40 minutes, but still a lot of action. Clock and uh, This clock did have a significant impact, but overall, it did just come down to this anti mage. And he just outfarmed everybody. Just look at the net worth. 2.5 times next highest person. Just too much, too difficult to overcome. Way too hard. So that's gonna be this match of the TMP Gaming Arena. I should be able to cast one more, maybe? Not too sure. But yeah, thank you for watching. And if you wanna sign up for this for your North American team, get some neat experience. I do know, or I was told that Carl plays in this in house league from time to time. So yeah, you can get some solid experience. And also, if you wanna sign up, just go to scrimdota.com for to get the scrimmages going for our team so yeah the more small arenas to get unknown teams into the thick of things get them as much experience as possible the better because Dota 2 it's only going to grow so looks like this Rubik very very sad that he could not steal hook at all as Rubik going to take the fall going to get hooked did he steal the hook at the very least nope as looks like that's going to get end the game for the dire so I am B Bond from DotaCommentaries.com. The main caster for this tournament is Kingdom Nerdia, but he was playing this game, played the Tide Hunter. But I think the MVP was probably the Disruptor and the Pudge in the early game. But Disruptor Kinetic Field just screwed up so much of everything. And that static storm is too good. But GG's were called and the Ancient is gonna take the fall. So this has been a cast from the Losers Bracket of the TNP Gaming Arena. I am Nibon from DotaCommentaries.com. Thank you for watching, and if you tuned on my stream, thank you for watching as well. Please do follow me at twitch.tv slash 773 youtube.com slash 773 And thank you for watching, and see you next time. As we're just going to wait, and then look at all these statistics. Dang, 706 of GPM by the Antimage. Pretty strong at the end. But yep, thank you for watching and see you soon.